So, remember those films that I used for the previous episode? Yes, those. These, ladies and gentlemen, are called diasporic films. Yes, remove the A and the S and add an ick and add films to it. Boom, you get diasporic films. But what does all this conceptual conundrum mean? At the end of the day, who even cares about diasporic films? Well, you intelligent person watching this right now, I'm going to tell you exactly why you should care by explaining what all this intellectual pulling shit out of your ass stuff really means. Following the conceptual understandings that we left off from in the previous video, I want to bring the seventh art into the picture, the keto. That marvelous magical thing that is so close to reality, but it actually isn't. Yes, the moving image, or the layperson's term, film. Anyways, the aim of my previous video was not to merely problematize the question, where are you from? But it was also meant to express how I feel about that question framed through conceptualizations about diasporas. In doing so, I have aimed to bring such discourses to the spotlight by using the mass medium of video and the social media channel of YouTube, and I believe that many filmmakers use film as a storytelling medium as it is accessible, can be engaging, and intellectually stimulating. Therefore, diasporic filmmakers do so too. They use film to propagate their story, their message, their consciousness. So diasporic filmmakers also critically address questions such as where are you from, most of the time, though, with less theoretical rigor. Additionally, diasporic films can shine light onto the mechanisms of a diaspora and concurrently problematize the question even more. So what does diasporic film entail? What do the theoretical conceptualizations taken for diasporas in the previous episode mean for diasporic films? So it's simple, right? Diasporic films can be merely defined as films made by diasporic filmmakers. No, pseudo-intellectuals, there's much more to that. Here are three defining characteristics of diasporic cinema. Explain in detail. Diasporic films lie in an in-between space. Much like diasporas, diasporic films lie somewhere in between first cinema, second cinema, and third cinema, and consequently blur their boundaries. Now, it is not so important to dwell on these categorizations in this video, but they are essential to note in order to understand that diasporic films do not strictly fall under one of these categorizations. Due to their hybridity, plurality, and articulation of differences, diasporas create artistic works that blur the boundaries between these categorizations by representing the diasporic experience. Their films are essentially aesthetically hybrid, and this hybridity can manifest itself through many cinematic channels, different styles, many sociocultural locales, various narrative traditions, languages, music, etc. It can appropriate aesthetics and styles used by Hollywood, for example, and ones that are associated with third cinema and auteur cinema. By doing so, diasporic films once again counter and challenge the hegemonic aesthetics associated with fixed categorical cinemas, such as mainstream national cinemas. As a result, diasporic cinema can regulate the heterodoxy-orthodoxy dichotomy where unconventional styles come into the mainstream. Therefore, cinema reinvigorates itself. Transformational Potential By propagating diasporic content and hybrid aesthetics, diasporic films have the ability to construct, reconstruct, and deconstruct not only diasporic identities, but also identities in general. Diasporic films can accentuate on discourses that mark the diasporic identity, therefore maintaining the diasporic discourse amongst the community and the wider, more general community. Representation can transform views about a specific diasporic community within the host and home communities, and also within the diasporic community itself, even if this transformation means sustenance of discourse that fosters identity construction. Moreover, addressing questions of identity through film also facilitates non-diasporic communities to reflect upon their own identity and pursue a more contemplative standpoint. This is all nurtured by the medium itself, taking the ontological argument a la André Bazin into consideration, primarily that film's essence is to reflect reality and it is the art form that is closest to it, diasporic films then capitalize on that aspect to represent memories that are not necessarily experienced firsthand, such as representing spaces of cultural identification. In other words, the films can become a prosthetic to the memory itself. The content of the films therefore can feed off of this memory and create an output that functions as a prosthetic for the maintenance of that diasporic culture. The images therefore become the memory, creating just simulacra, where the images can become the actual memory itself since the real has not been experienced personally. Spatiotemporal mobility. In conjunction with the temporal disorientation that diasporas use to maintain themselves, their films are also prominent in exhibiting sociocultural spaces. Many diasporic films foreground spatial mobility, or to put it more simply, journeys. These journeys Journeys can involve journeys of discovering one's identity, journeys of reconnecting or connecting to the homeland, or more metaphorically, to the mother, and journeys that aid in dismantling one's identity. All these conceptualizations of journeys must up to comprehend that the diasporic identity is in flux, and film becomes a further means to negotiate and articulate this diasporic phenomenon. Additionally, the different sociocultural spaces of identification present within diasporic films exemplify the hybrid and diverse nature of diasporas themselves. This representation of spaces can be achieved through the mise-en-scene, where two or more sociocultural spaces are represented and evoked 
evoked with subjective rationales of belonging. Juxtaposing spaces exemplifies how diasporas articulate cultural differences for their own sustenance. Therefore, spatial mobility is of uttermost importance in diasporic filmmaking, and these varying spaces coalesce within the space of the film, in which the film becomes some sort of third space, a negotiator of some sorts. All this to say that the camera eye manifests its ability to optically record the diasporic experience. Therefore, the diasporic optic comes to life. In other words, the diasporic optic is a lens that is prescribed to diasporic subjects and filmmakers, not merely the figurative lens, the perspective of perceiving reality, but also the actual lens of the camera. Suyata Morty states that the diasporic optic is a way of seeing that underscores the interstice. The spaces that are and fall between the cracks of the national and the transnational as well as other social formations. It is primarily due to this diasporic optic which gives rise to the diasporic film. Film allows the inscription of the diasporic optic and its dissemination to the world. This representational capacity allows for the diaspora consciousness to move from the margins into the spotlight. This is the greater aim of diaspora cinema after all, to challenge hegemonic and nationalist discourses on identity through a representation. As Stuart Hall famously states about identity's affinities with cinema, identity as constituted not outside, but within representation. And hence of cinema, not as a second order mirror held up to reflect what already exists, but as that form of representation which is able to constitute us as new kinds of subjects, and thereby enable us to discover who we are. Film therefore becomes this interstitial space, the third space, where diasporans can negotiate and articulate their cultural identities, whether for the filmmakers or the diasporan viewer.